in the cradle of the new world, the island of Tanzia is home to a new and great race called the Akazi. The Akazi had little interest in technology and material wealth. They pursued wisdom above all else. With the Akazi, arcanity, alchemy, and endless possibility would flourish. Because of their unique values, other races often regarded them as primitive and mistook them for weak. A critical mistake. Life was good on Tanzia, until one day a terrible evil known as the Skeleton King came to claim the island. The greatest Akazi warriors confronted the Skeleton King and his undead armies, and one by one, the Akazi fell. This terrible evil fought with an advantage, a unique knowledge of something born of this new world. This enemy fought with arcanity. The new world was young, and few understood the mysteries of Arcanity. But one Akaze had already attained a mastery greater than any other, and the Skeleton King soon met his match. The Skeleton King was furious. This small, frail creature had undone decades of preparation with a single blow. The Skeleton King retreated, and the Akazi did not pursue. Tanzia was safe once again. The Akazi continued to flourish, and the Great One continued to pioneer alchemy and arcanity. Creatures of all races came from all over the world seeking his mentorship, and he taught any who would learn from him. Until one day, something more pressing demanded his attention. The Great One was blessed with many children and many grandchildren whom he loved dearly. But this one was very special. This one would be the center of his world for many years. As the child grew, he showed great aptitude for arcanity. No grandparent ever felt more love or pride for a child than the Great One did for his young grandson. But he knew that their precious time together would be short. The Skeleton King was already plotting a terrible revenge against his new foe. He would end the Great One's bloodline. The Skeleton King used the darkest of arcanity to summon an evil and tortured creature from another dimension and enslave it to his will. The creature, a shade, was the perfect assassin. It passed through solid objects at will, traveled nearly unseen in the shadows, and had a deadly touch. The Skeleton King watched from afar in glee as the Shade passed through the young child and stopped his heart. With a single word, the Great One obliterated the Shade into a million dark splinters that dissipated in the light. But the damage was already done. As the Great One fell to his knees, weeping, over the body of his young grandson. The Skeleton King was very, very pleased. But the Skeleton King had once again underestimated his Akazi foe, and when the Great One sensed that the Skeleton King was no longer watching, the illusion was lifted and the child was smiling once again. The Great One, though, was very sad for he knew that events had been set into motion which would end their happy time together, 
and he would not see his beloved grandson again for a very long time. He sent the child to live in seclusion on Volcano Island with a most caring and trusted friend, Abenaki, far away from the peering eyes of the skeletal king. The Great One, believing his presence was a danger to the village, also left. And he never returned. Decades passed. In the village, whispers of his sudden disappearance so long ago turned into speculation of his certain demise. The Skeleton King, believing that victory finally lay within his grasp, would again descend on Tanzir to claim his prize. And this time, no one can stop him.